Welcome to St. Joseph the Worker Parish. Today we celebrate the Nativity of our Lord. Our enter Santiphon is, Today you will know that the Lord will come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather on this Christmas vigil, we come before the Lord recognizing his presence in our lives and giving us the strength that we need in order to truly celebrate as a family of faith. But for the times that we have turned away from that joy, the times that we have abandoned his love. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, so may you also fate merit to face him confidently when he comes as our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. 
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit. your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew glory to you Lord. Lord this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about when his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph but before they lived together she was found with child through the Holy Spirit Joseph her husband since he was a righteous man yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are na to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. He had, he had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. For the past several weeks of Advent, we have been journeying with the Holy Family in order to understand that the Holy Family was not much different from our own. 
within their struggles within the world, within their struggles within the situations and the climate of the world that they were living in, they mirror a lot of what we've been going through. We talked a little bit about how John the Baptist was misunderstood, not because of who he was, but because they didn't know Jesus. And not knowing Jesus, they didn't know what his life was all about. And within that, he was being judged because of his faith in Christ. And even what we hear in today's gospel reminds us of that call of John the Baptist to go out and to proclaim that good news. We talked about Joseph and the struggles that he had, very much related to today's gospel, as he struggled with, am I worthy to be the foster father of the Son of God? And then finally, last week, we talked about Mary's struggle, even to the point of losing her husband and losing her son on the cross. And in all of those moments, as we meditated on the hardship of the Holy Family that was being imposed upon them throughout their entire life, the question can come into play, and it has by many people as we were talking about the homilies over the past couple weeks, is how'd they get through it all? And I said, wait until Christmas. And today, we find out how the Holy Family got through all the trials and the tribulations, the hardships of this world. They kept Christ in the center of their family life. Everything else was secondary to Jesus. And in that keeping Christ the center of their life, they were able to overcome everything that was thrown at them, whether it be a census that was depicted by the government in order for them to leave their hometown and to travel to Bethlehem, whether it be the movement of a tyrannical leader that was trying to kill them and killed many, many children, and them moving into and the flight into Egypt, whether it was the movement of unworthiness within St. Joseph or the extreme sense of loss within our Blessed Mother, the only way that they could get through it all was keeping Jesus in the center of their life. And in that gift that God gave them, they received grace upon grace in their relationship with Jesus Christ. That movement of the Holy Spirit that stirred in Mary's womb during the Annunciation did not leave her when Christ was born. Rather, he became more present than ever in her and in Joseph's life. So much so that from a small manger in a stable of Bethlehem, light shined forth in the darkness. And in that beautiful light, the angels gave glory to God, the shepherds came and adored, the magi came from the east to seek out the gift of love and of grace that was being poured into the world. From this small holy family, people started to gain hope as well. They started to realize that the promise that God made is fulfilled, and the hope that is rooted in Jesus Christ is not only given to the select few or just to those who are small in number, but to anybody who would open their hearts to Jesus and allow that love and that grace to pour into their hearts and into their lives as it did for Mary and Joseph, and to allow that gift of love and of grace to be a part of their lives as well, as the shepherds went out to give glory to God for all that they have seen and that they heard, that the Magi decided to leave behind Herod because of the negativity, because of the struggle, because of everything else that Herod was to them, they left that behind and they pursued greater glories. They pursued a greater relationship with God. Within that movement of Jesus, present to Mary and Joseph, present to the Holy Family, the world realized that there's hope. There's love, and there's a deep-rooted faith. Even the small song that we know, a little drummer boy came forward with all that he had, just a drum, in order to give to the Lord and in order to receive 
more than he can ever ask for or imagine. You see, my brothers and sisters, in this time that we are in right now, a time of a pandemic, a time of isolation, a time of being alone, for some of us, it's been a time of great loss within our family, within our community. For some of us, it has been one prayer after another that we pray for those who we know are nurses and doctors and personal care facilitators and medical professionals. It's been tireless moments of trying to teach our children from home while trying to be the best parent we could be. And in all of these movements, of all of these struggles, Christ is with us. He is Emmanuel. He is God present to us. And the way we get through these moments in our history is to always look to where the road is leading. It's always leading us to a greater relationship with God. In that heavenly realm, ultimately we pray, but throughout our lives, a greater relationship with Jesus. We can sing the glory of God with the angels when we have Christ in our lives. We could pursue the glory of God in searching Him out through other people by wishing each other a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year when we have Christ in our hearts. We grow in our knowledge of our faith and in a hope that this world cannot understand when we believe that Christ is present to us. In the midst of this struggle, we have joy, even though we may not have happiness, because in our hearts dwells the eternal Son of God. My brothers and sisters, on this Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, let us truly celebrate this gift that God gives us, not only once a year, but each and every day. As we come before him, present to us in the Blessed Sacrament, as we receive him anew every time we celebrate the Holy Eucharist and the Holy Mass, as we celebrate the Incarnation that wasn't thousands of years ago, but is present to us right here and right now, as we celebrate Christ's Incarnation, the presence of God with us, we gain the strength that we need to overcome every oppressive force in God's name and to truly celebrate what it means to be a child of God, a brother of Jesus Christ, a temple of the Holy Spirit, a holy family, a people of hope and of peace. Let our prayer this year be one that opens our hearts to Jesus more fully and so that we may share that Lord and Savior with others, as Mary and Joseph did, as we celebrate these Christmas days. My brothers and sisters, twice a year we commemorate the Incarnation in a special way as we kneel, as we genuflect at the words, by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For those who are home, if you can just put your hand on your chest and recognize the great mystery of the Incarnation, but for those who us here, please genuflect with me. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a family of prayer, we turn to our loving Father as we recognize the needs of our lives and of our world. Our response is, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. For our Pope Francis and our shepherd, Bishop Bambera, that the Holy Spirit may guide them throughout this Christmas season and the new year, we pray, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For all our civil leaders, that they may have the strength and wisdom to make the good decisions as we suffer these times of COVID-19, we pray, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For all the sick and suffering, especially those dealing with the COVID virus, and for all those health workers supporting them and their families, we pray, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For this parish family, for all of us dealing with new issues throughout this year, this um, upcoming year, we ask and realize that Jesus is standing right next to us. All we have to do is open our hearts and let him in. We pray, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated religious life, May they respond to God's call. We pray, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus, for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus, and for all our beloved dead. May they join our Lord in the banquet of heaven. We pray, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Good and gracious Father, you give us all good gifts. You fill them with life and goodness. You bless them and make them holy. Hear these prayers we place before you, answer them according to your will, so that we may truly celebrate the gift of your presence in our lives, and that celebration may extend to all that we meet as we share Christ to others. For we ask these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our altar is being prepared, our offertory hymn is Once in Royal David City. Thank you.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all the good of his holy church. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly, for knowing that in them you may make manifest the beginnings of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And we heath your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are clay. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith, Lord, remember your servants. and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. To whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, power and the glory are yours, 
now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, I am worthy, not worthy that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, but only, only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we prepare to receive the Blessed Sacrament in, the sacrament in person or in a spiritual communion, our communion antiphon is, The glory of the Lord will be revealed.
Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may draw our new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by who, whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a few announcements as we come to the close of this beautiful Mass. I would like to thank so many people for all of the great graces that has been bestowed upon us during this time of year and during this time of COVID. You know, when we think about all the struggles and trials that we've been through, there's been also many beautiful gifts that God has given us, um, like that little one uh, crying right now. <laughs> it's, it's what it's all about. So as we come together to celebrate as a family, we do so recognizing the gift of love that is present to us, the gift of love that is sometimes absent from us, and there's a pain in our hearts when we realize those people who are members of our hearts who might be in God's arms or might be afar from us. Within all of those graces, we recognize love, which overcomes every oppressive force that never separates us from God and that brings us together no matter where we may be. So as we come into this beautiful season of Christmas, may the love of the Christ child grow ever more dearly within your heart. May his love be shared amongst your family and your friends. And may that love be a healing balm that brings our family together, that brings our nation together, and that heals the hearts and the health of whole many, so many people. So on behalf of myself and the staff here at St. Joseph the Worker, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth has illumined the most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is Joy to the World. 